Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video we are doing historical fiction mysteries. These are my top favorite historical fiction mystery series. The majority of these are cozy. There's one or two that are less on the cozy side and I will indicate as I go which one you know, which are which, of course. That way you have more of an idea of what kind of historical fiction mystery you're getting into. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into my first one. If you're new, welcome, my name is Amy Marie, and I do lots of book content on this channel every single week. So our first series is the newest one to me, and it's one that I love. The first book in the series was absolutely amazing. And this is the Lady Hardcastle mystery series. I checked out the first one from the library. It's called A Quiet Life in, a, in the Country. And basically this follows Lady Hardcastle and her maid Florence Armstrong or Flo. And they are living in the English countryside kind of retiring after an active life which they kind of go into in the mystery so I don't want to get too much into it. But they have the best conversation, the best banter. They are set in the very very early 1900s in like late 1890s somewhere about there and I love their dynamics so they this is a cozy historical fiction mystery series it is set like I said in England and it is just fantastic the mysteries are well thought out there's a good variety of mysteries like one is a you know involves like a heist one involves like uh, you know kind of a framed murder there's like the different ones that are kind of from their past one takes place at a circus and I just picked up the next one in the series from my library which is called in the market for murder how cute are these covers I'm just covering my library's name so obviously that wouldn't be there generally but how cute is the cut like, I cannot get over the cover but that is Lady Hardcastle and Flo right there they have the most amazing camaraderie and like friendship they've been together for over 14 years and the banter and conversation between the two of them kills me, like enough to make me laugh while I'm reading it. But the mysteries are still great. I love the setting. Everything is so beautiful. This particular one takes place after a trip to the cattle market um, and a farmer is, he is found dead essentially. So they kind of jump into that investigation to find out what happened to the guy. First book in the series was absolute five stars. I will link my video up above where I was reading booktubers favorites and this was Meg with books favorite like one of the cozy mysteries I found that she really loves so th she, this was what kind of inspired by her and I love the series so much. So I had to recommend it for this historical fiction book because it's incredible. Next we have probably my most like long held favorite historical fiction cozy mystery series and that is the Reese Bowen's Royal Spinus mystery series. This features Lady Georgiana or Georgie as she is called in the series and she's like 34th in line for the English throne or something so she has royalty but she lacks a lot of the money and financial resources and she's unmarried so a lot of people kind of look at her as a spinster and she kind of has to make her own way in the world despite having like a privileged background so she's in different books she's working as a maid or like a hostess or just different odd jobs that she has to keep hidden from like kind of hide her identity for and that kind of gives her different ways to get into different mysteries and mischief and stuff and later on in the series she even gets like sent on different like spy missions from like the royal queen uh, who's like I want you to watch this person or I want you to attend this event on behalf of the royal family and something happens. It's a delightful series. It takes place in like the 1930s, like early 1930s. So the world war has not started yet. But it's a really great series. Georgie is a delightful, spunky, refreshing character. I love her friends in this, her family, like all the characters are so heartwarming. The mysteries are always well thought out. The settings are fun, they change up a lot. Like she's been on like a safari one, she's been to Transylvania, like there's a lot of really cool settings in this series that I love. And then speaking of Reese Bowen, she also writes the Molly Murphy series, which I also want to recommend. And this one takes place in like very early 1900s in New York with Molly Murphy who is an Irish American immigrant and she's just starting her life off in New York and Molly has just committed a murder in self-defense in Ireland so she's fleeing the country because she's afraid she'll be locked up for defending herself against this man who was trying to like force himself on her essentially and so she ended up you know fighting back and he was you know, like harmed, you know, killed in the process. So she flees to America to start a new life and everything. And her story is just so incredibly inspiring. And the if you really like the politics of like historical fiction and like learning a lot about the politics and like the political atmosphere at the time, I would recommend the Molly Murphy series, especially Reese Bowen does mention it. There's some definite mentions and things with it here, but it's more focused on like 
the royal family politics, if you will, whereas the Molly Murphy series focuses a lot on big issues at the time, like uh, bad factory conditions, women not having the right to vote, uh, women, you know, not, not being able to work in the same jobs as men, and so Molly actually tries to even open her own detective agency at one point, and it's just a fantastic series. Both of these series have, like, almost 20 books in each of them, so you definitely have a strong backlist if you end up loving them. I have read every book in this series, and I can't wait for the next one to come out. It's called Peril in Paris. It's coming out in November. And then the Molly Murphy series, I just read the latest one, which was Wild Irish Rose. That came out in the spring, and I've read almost every one in that series. You can read both of these series out of order, but I do recommend staying in order just because I feel like the characters really build on themselves, and the subplots with the family and stuff is really interesting as well. But I would recommend anything Reese Bowens writes basically and these two series are both excellent historical fiction mysteries. Love them. They're both cozy. The Molly Murphy one gets a little bit darker with just the heavier political undertone but it's still very much cozy. It's not graphic. It's just very engaging, excellent historical fiction writing and the mysteries are incredible. Okay so my next two recommendations are both historical fiction mysteries. They're both in the cozy genre. They're not particularly graphic or anything like that. But what makes these special is both of them actually have main characters who are real life people. So these are reimagined mysteries around real life people and both of them are actually authors. So my first one is the Louisa May Alcott mystery series. I think there are three or four in total. I'll put the number on the screen. This is by Anna McLean and I checked out the other ones from my library. This one I just purchased and I love these. If you enjoy Louisa May Alcott's writing, I personally love Little Woman. It's one of my all-time favorite classics or just books in general. It's such a great book. Um, but there's like little hints to how Louisa May Alcott may have come up with different things that were inspired in her own life. I absolutely just love the setting. I love the wittiness. I feel like they really brought her to life, especially since Louisa May Alcott herself was supposed to be very much like Joe, and she really feels like this, especially with her spunky nature and chasing after different criminals who have hurt her friends or family or different things she comes across. So I just fully recommend this series. It's great, and if you are a fan, especially of her writing, it's just all the little tidbits are just especially pleasing to have. So I definitely recommend this. So d d definitely check this one out. Okay, and so our next one, this is the mystery featuring Daphne du Maurier, and this is the Murder on the Cliffs, is the particular edition I have here, which is just so beautiful, so foreboding. Like the previous book, this is the one I haven't read yet, I just purchased it, it's the only one out of the three that I haven't read, but I'll pop pictures of the other two that I have read on screen, and they were just excellent. This is written by Joanna Chalice, and these feature author of Rebecca, Daphne du Maurier, as a young person kind of exploring the world and not quite writing, like not a published author yet, and she kind of stumbles on different mysteries and usually they involve people of nobility because Daphne du Maurier's family was like nobles, they were quite influential people, um, quite famous, so she uses her connections in that way to kind of get into different situations which is really fun. This particular one takes place where she is staying in Cornwall, much like a lot of her own mysteries, they're usually set in like these dark stormy places like near the ocean and just like you know you can kind of see here so I love that they are set in a lot of the same places that some of her own like novels are set so you can kind of see where the inspiration was drawn from and so Daphne is walking along the shores and she actually comes across a woman who is washed up on shore and she's dead she's very beautiful she's got long hair and unfortunately you know she's passed away and so when the body is identified it actually turns out to be the fiance of this lord in the area which is really you know just really strange and this is you know a woman of like I think I'm assuming like noble birth and whatnot so it's kind of strange that she just went missing and no one seemed to have noticed that she went missing and so Daphne starts to poke her nose around and actually works her way with her connections into staying at that Lord's house when she finds out that the woman was not just like she didn't just die in a tragic accident she was actually murdered and thrown out to sea but her body washed up on shore so she starts to poke around his manor and all the ones I've read so far they've taken place in very interesting unique memorable homes much like Manderley and Rebecca, which I love, and I, again, it kind of is inspiring for Daphne in the story. So I really like these. I'm excited to read this one this fall, but the other two I've read from the series I've thoroughly enjoyed, really loved, so I wanted to throw that on this list. All right, and then last but certainly not least, we have the Harlem Renaissance Mystery Series by Nekasa Afia, and I have read both of these. I checked them both out from my library, so I don't have a physical copy to show you, but I'll pop a picture on screen. 
These are fantastic. They, <laughs> There's only two out so far. It is an ongoing mystery series. The latest one just came out this July and it was amazing. It's called Harlem Sunset and I love the first cover in this series but the Harlem Sunset one with the maroon and her in the gold dress with the feather boa and the gold eyeshadow and the matching lipstick. I die. I love, I love that cover. It's like one of my favorite covers I've seen in a long time. It's just stunning. But anyways, this takes place during the Harlem Renaissance and this features our main character, Louise, who is an African-American young woman. She's in, uh, the story takes place when she's like, I think about 28, 27. So she's like in her late 20s. So the first book in the series kind of draws on Louise's past when she was actually kidnapped along with a rash of other uh, young African-American teenagers at the time they were kidnapped and she helped them to escape and get out and so she was nicknamed Harlem's hero. However, the person responsible for it was never caught. So it kind of then flashes forward to her as an adult and she's still working on a lot of trauma from the event and also kind of the notoriety of being Harlem's hero, also disappointing her family in different ways because she's living a less traditional life where she has decided to, you know, not get married to like the person her family had tried to like get her to marry. And so the first book takes place where some of the same types of crimes are starting to happen again when Luis is an adult and so she's kind of roped into helping the police force because the police force at this time was just made up of like white men and she as a young African-American woman can slip into a lot of different places that they wouldn't be able to go without being like very noticed by the people there. So she's kind of given some access to the case and taken on with the case and kind of coerced into helping. She's kind of a reluctant sleuth. So unlike a lot of mysteries that I read where the person really kind of, you know, instigates and wants to solve the mystery like some of the other ones I've talked about today, she's more of a reluctant sleuth who's doing it out of necessity, which I like. She's a very flawed character, like the author does not hold back on that at all. And, and as well as giving flaws to the other characters, I feel like the characters in this are very fleshed out. You get a really good idea of like their history, their family life, what kind of has led them to where they're at in life right now. I just love this series. She also has a girlfriend, Rosa Maria, and Rosa Maria is, might be my favorite character. She is so awesome. The second book was even better than the first book somehow. I loved the second book so much. I thought it was really, really brilliant and I just cried at the ending and I'm not going to say anything but you know if you have read that one I just know I cried during the ending let me know if you did because I just sat there like no 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 but anyways so it, it was an excellent book they were both five star reads for me I would highly recommend the series I cannot wait I'm hoping she releases another uh, third book in the series next year since she seems to be releasing them like one one each year at this kind of rate so I'm really hoping there's another one next year because I need to know what happens next. So anyways, these are my recommendations today for historical fiction mysteries. The Harlem Renaissance series is the only one that's definitely not cozy. There's definitely a lot of darker scenes in that, more heavy descriptions of violence, um, even a scene in one of them where someone is like, uh, someone is like forcing themselves on someone. It is very, it's rather brief. It's not super graphic in my opinion. Um, and I have like a fairly low threshold for super violent like scenes and stuff like that but I was able to read it and still really enjoy it just know it's a darker it's definitely darker and more graphic than the other ones I talked about today but these are the ones I would thoroughly recommend if you're looking for a really good historical fiction mystery thank you guys so much for watching please let me know down below I would love to hear what your thoughts are on these mysteries and if you have any other historical fiction mysteries that you really recommend it's a genre that I love and I really need to find even more of so let me know if you have any recommendations for this genre and I will see you guys in my next video don't forget to like and subscribe I do upload mystery videos and book videos every single week and I don't want you to miss out. So I'll see you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day. Bye!